Fuckland, the AFC West is one of the most interesting divisions for fantasy football. You have sleepers like Henry Ruggs, Mike Williams. What's going on with Josh Jacobs? You've got stars, Mahomes, Kelsey, you know, the Chiefs, those boring players. But there is so much to discuss and how this division goes when you're looking at playing in a tough division. Javante, Melvin Gordon, so much to get to. You won't want to miss it. Make sure you, you like the video, subscribe, click the bell. Become part, become part of this show and enjoy. Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, we want to let you know about a little something special we got going on at the end of August. Yes, our one and only live show. You can get tickets right now at ballerslive.com on August 28th at 7 p.m. We're going live and you're going to be joining us oh baby it's gonna be a blast if you better get to ballerslive.com these things are selling like hotcakes that's right we'll be at the crescent ballroom in phoenix in late august you can check it all out at ballerslive.com and once again we're partnering with saint jude children's research hospital where ten dollars of every ticket are going straight to saint jude children's research hospital to support their mission of finding cures and saving children check it out at ballerslive.com Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, we've got a great show. Thursday, July 15th. The NFL season inches closer by the day. Mike Wright is here. Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. Are we talking about the AFC East today? No. (laughs) We already did that, Mike. Oh, man. Don't have to do that again. Uh, we are talking about the AFC West. Oh, yeah. That's much better. More exciting. For, fact, fan, for fantasy. Look, if you're a fan of an AFC, AFC East team, that's fine. Yeah. It, this is just more fantasy football impact today on the show. A little bit more intrigue in terms of teams that will compete in the division. I think we know the Chiefs are going to do it, but Vegas is being pretty generous with the other three teams in this division. At least two of them. <laughs> I mean, maybe I haven't seen the Vegas line, so I don't know. Maybe they're being generous, but I think there are two other good teams in this division. I did see the Vegas lines. Ooh. And that's why I said, oh, they are being generous. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what you think. Another jam packed show though. we're right in the middle of our divisional breakdowns. Uh, This is show four. We're wrapping up the AFC today, right, Brooks? That's right. All done with the AFC after today's divisional breakdown in the AFC West. Have some NFL news to talk about couple things at the top of the show I want to let people know about. First of all, we do have a winner slash loser <laughs> for Mike's official autographed glamour big, shot. Big winner. Big time. And you biggest did autograph pri- that, right? Biggest pri- yes. Biggest prize that this show has ever given away. By Just physi- size. Via yes. physical size. <laughs> right. Which is Not just, value. Now Al, Al Borland has to figure out how to ship it. Yeah, good which luck. Which is, uh, he's going to spend the next few days doing. But Luke Koch. Luke Koch, congratulations, slash, I'm sorry, you've won Mike's Glamour Shot autographed. Please, if you are so inclined, send us a picture of where you hang that thing. Also, hang it somewhere very public. Very yeah, oh, yeah. I recommend be. the restroom. <laughs> we do have, that, that would be great. That would yep, be hilarious. That would be awesome. If Mike is just staring at you in there as you do your business. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's great. We Thanks, have, guys. awesome for them, not for, for me. <laughs> We do have another giveaway right now. So we we do this throughout the year. We are giving away a signed Antonio Gibson mini helmet. That's nice. That is a nice one to win. And you can find it at footclangiveaway.com. There are a few ways to enter over there. Completely free. Yes, completely free giveaway, footclangiveaway.com. If you want to go check that out, we'll be giving away a lot of great stuff over the course of the season. And if, yeah, if you want to see that glamour shot, it was the June 24th episode. Oh, is that yes, right, sir. Brooks? Yep. Go check it out on YouTube. Uh, um, if you want. Yeah. Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, and the communities join the foot.com. 
Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. Buy or sell three quarterbacks throwing for 40 plus touchdowns in 2021. 17 game season, that would be 2.4 touchdowns per game. That's a high bar. Last year we had three quarterbacks, Rodgers, Wilson, Brady. That's crazy that we had three. Yeah, Yeah. because since 2000 there have only been 13 total seasons. So last year was a lot. And then Mahomes was pacing out for that as well. Now, to be fair to the buyer sell, coming up this next season there are 17 games – and if you want to include people you who got to be fair to the buyer but, sell. But my point here <laughs> to repeat what Andy said 2 seconds ago. <laughs> my point here <laughs> is that there are an additional 12 players who actually would have been a 40 uh touchdown ah. throwing uh quarterback with one more game with one more game. That's right. So th- th- basically 37 just slightly over 37 uh touchdowns thrown in 16 games. So, yeah, so that it basically doubles the amount of players who over the last uh, you know, would 20 have. years Wait, would did have. Wait, you say 12 could. additional players? That is correct. Wow. Since 2000. Oh, okay. So much more since now. I thought you meant last year there were 12 right on the precipice. You're just, <laughs> no, that, you're, was everybody like, was throwing touchdowns last year. So you're saying year. yeah, so there would be 25 in the last 20. It still wouldn't be the math wouldn't check out for that to be what you would expect. Not for the buy or sell of three doing it again. I went and I looked um, at at my stats to see how many players I put over that threshold, and I have to sell this. Ooh, how many do you have? I I actually have zero. Wow. Um, however, it's that, not a lot. That's <laughs> that is not necessarily. Uh, you know, I I wouldn't bet that zero were to get there when I'm statting these players out. Um, I, I'm, I'm conservative in their range of outcomes on, you know, every, every player, every position. Um, but I do think two players have a very good chance. Like, like I, you know, when you look at Mahomes, when you look at Brady, I think those two are, you know, they should be able to throw for 40 if they have a great season. I'm buying this. Who is your third? Right or now, more? right now I have Mahomes, Rogers, Brady. But I believe on a seven with the seventeen game season, the way these, you know, Dak is coming back this year, he's a candidate for forty. Wilson did it last year. Josh Allen got close. Um, so I think I will buy this one. Yeah, I am an easy sell. I have currently one projected uh, quarterback to pass the forty uh, touchdown mark, and the the hard part about gauging it from last year. Last year was insane. The scoring was was off of the charts, which was one of those things, you know. Historically, you could have seen it coming. Where generally, when the when the off season is shortened and teams don't have a full training camp, defenses suffer tremendously. You saw it with the the lockout before whatever, whenever seven years ago or whatever. You had a, a huge offensive output that year. COVID hits. There's really no training camp, or there's limited, I should say. Huge offensive output for 2020. So I'm going to sell and say that things re- regress to the mean in terms of pass, total passing touchdowns across the league. And even with the being fair, of course, Jason, being mm-hmm. fair to the buy or sell. Right, we need to care about because the buy or sell. there is one extra game in 2021, I'm going to sell. Okay. Uh, Brooks, we should keep track of this one. This would be a fun one to return to at the end of the year and just see how it turns out because uh, – I'm. Man, they, you're right. I mean, last year was an anomaly. It was and, wild. And and I, I can promise you, Dak would have hit that number last year. Oh, yeah. So it would have been more than three, uh, which would have been kind of wild. But that was Buy or Sell brought to you by Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use our code BALLERS, and they'll give you 10 bucks, And you can buy a sweet piece of gear like the Antonio Gibson helmet we're giving away. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into the news. <laughs> News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. ESPN reporting Damian Harris, the oh, surefire man. number one. Here we go again. In the backfield in New England. Here we go. 
Drumbeat has been getting louder for Damian Harris. Yes, but haven't we all already assumed he's the clear cut? Yes, running back one for the team. Like we that, have, sure. But I guess my point is, does it matter? Yes. Does it matter if he's the clear cut running back one? I, for I get what Jason's saying, and the answer is kind of no because we all assume that, and you're not saying something like nobody's saying. James White looks to be the clear-cut pass-catching running back for the New England. Yeah, of course. Like, being the number one running back in New England is step one of, like, three things you have to do to have any relevance. Cam Newton being your quarterback, scoring 12 times last year, that's a problem. Not yeah. playing on third down and getting the ball thrown to you, that's a problem. I like Damian Harris. I'm not – it's not a 0% chance he has a breakout season. Like, there's a – he is somebody that you could absolutely have in the breakout category – Give him enough carries. Sure. Things go the right way. Touchdown wise, he's at eight, right? He gets to seven or eight, and you're you've stolen him late in the draft in the eighth round. That's why it matters. It matters right now because if you're doing a draft, if you're doing best ball and those types of thing, types of, of things, Damian Harris is not a, a fourth round pick. He's not in that area where you're the you the known, the really good running backs, they're gone. And so you know, you're grabbing at players where you, I I think they're the starting running back, but you're investing such a high draft pick that if you're wrong, you just passed on an, an outrageously good wide receiver in that range. But right now, he's in, he's in an area where this is fantastic. RB33. Like, that's wild to me. A guy who last year... Uh, there are was, only 32 NFL teams. Right. Yeah, just so, just it, for context. Yes, thank you. Exactly. Uh, so... Last year in his games, that would have put him on a 17-game pace of of nearly 233 attempts. The I mean, his 1,100 rushing yard pace, maybe that hits, maybe that doesn't. But opportunities for a running back going that late, yes, I am extremely interested. It will uh, what's, Stories like this will drive the ADP up closer that's the, to the that's year. That's the bigger question is where does he end up by August? But even still, I don't see him getting up past the sixth round, at which point in the sixth, a starting running back, very interested. All right, our next bit, bit of hype, I do buy. I have bought all offseason, and I find to be maybe the best actual value at the running back position. We're talking about David Montgomery, who ended last year on fire. Matt Nagy came out and said he wants 20 rushing attempts per game for David Montgomery. Will he get it? Who knows? Last year, in that electric season, 16.5. Bad offensive line that's improving. Um, he averaged 19.3 during a six game stretch during, you know, that run. But I think David Montgomery is, and more importantly, will be undervalued in August in drafts right now, the RB 19. I think he's a steal. I really do. He may end up a, my guy, oh, gross. he might end up a, my guy because nobody wants Mike just said, yep. Oh, gross. Yeah, exactly. Which means that. This is why I say his value will remain there. Yeah, I mean, look, David Montgomery is is far more valuable. We're talking about, obviously, different areas of the draft, a couple rounds apart, but Damian Harris versus David Montgomery, who was last year's running back four, I, you know, is, is completely being disrespected right now at the 3-4 turn. Um, I, you know, I would rather take a shot on David Montgomery being what we saw at the end of the year. I don't project him to be that. Um, and also right there are, are great uh, wide receivers, but we've seen enough on the field and enough involvement and the fact that the head coach, this isn't a beat reporter, this is the head coach saying he wants to get him the ball a lot. Uh, it's, it's a good option for fantasy. If you draft a wide receiver early or you're the Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller uh, team, stealing David Montgomery at the end of the third round or the top of the fourth round, I just think... Uh, you have something solid no matter what, and you might have something great. Right. That's, that's how I view Montgomery. That's that's a fair way to look at it because, let's see, I'm looking at my rankings. I have him projected right now RB20. So RB19 on the 80 – I'm not far off of what people out there drafting believe about David Montgomery, but we have seen the upside before. I just – I'm out on – I'm out on him repeating – that again. I'm, I'm, well, that makes sense. That's why you don't have him ranked at four. Yeah. No, but I'm saying I'm out of like RB1, top 12 for David Montgomery. I would not 
take that. I, I do think that there is a pathway um, with Justin Fields where this offense is better. Just at, in general, uh, is is a higher scoring, better moving it's offense. Better with and, Andy Dalton than and, it was last year. Yeah, sure. So, well, Andy Dalton, Nick Foles, I they're so close to me. Right, which is where he did put up elite numbers with those horrible, horrible Trubisky. players. Don't forget about that. Um, but we'll talk more about him, it sounds like. <laughs> Miko Collins, Texans rookie wide receiver, should have a chance at a lot of snaps early. Makes a lot of sense when you look at Houston's depth chart at wide receiver. Uh, they traded up to get him in the third round. So familiarize yourself with the name Nico Collins. Uh, Brandon Cooks is on the other gross draft pick list with maybe David Montgomery and some of these other names. But Nico Collins, what do you guys think here? I love it. Man. Any I, upside? Yeah, there is absolutely upside. It's a, it's a day two pick, a day two pick from a team that had very limited draft capital uh, just going into the draft, and then they go after their guy, Nico Collins. Yes, he was. He became one of my favorite later round rookie picks. Uh, if it really is Taylor as the quarterback for this team for the season, Nico Collins is probably not going to be that in interesting this year for fantasy, but he is a name that you should familiarize yourself with right now. Yeah, more, more for dynasty than redraft, but he's certainly good. And Nico Collins and Amon Ross St. Brown – for the Detroit Lions. These are two rookies that you might not be familiar with their names, but their opportunities are wide open in front of them. They have very little competition, and if they can prove themselves, then they will be on the NFL field getting targets more than um, you know a lot of other rookies. All right, that was today's news and notes presented, as always, by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest-growing fantasy platform in the world. In the world. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's get divisional. All right, we're in the AFC West. Let's start at the top, the tippy top of the league. 14-2, and two, the Kansas City Chiefs coming in with a Vegas win total projection of, you want to guess, Jason? I like it when you guess these because you've been very close and you never cheat, maybe. Okay. Um, I, I cheated things, but I've not cheated at this. I would say 12. Wins. Mike, do, did you already see it? I did not, but I would take the over. 12 and a half. Okay. Oh. You yeah. lose, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, only two losses. The Raiders got them in week five. And then week 17 was really, they didn't play their starters. So, um, man, that's the, that's the way. You want to beat the Chiefs. Get them to not play their get starters. Get them to not play their get starters. Get in, in week 18. Right. That's 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 my like coaching strategy. Crazy stat from last year. Every single game from week 9 through 16 for the Chiefs last year was a one-score game. Seven consecutive one-score games. Wow. And they went 7-0. and Oh. So Mahomes, uh -oh. Mahomes the GOAT there. I the, To me, that is, that's having the closer. That's Michael Jordan in the final minute. That's Kobe in the final minute. You've got Mahomes, and you end up winning those games. Like that's not anomalous to me. That is very anomalous to me because you, even you list those names, Kobe and Jordan. Yeah, they made a lot of buzzer beaters. They also missed a lot I of would buzzer be, beaters. I, I would Mariano be, Rivera. How, is that name better? Yeah, that's better. Incredible. You not only pronounced it but knew it. Yeah, baseball. Yeah, that was great until game seven. I want to know that. I know we don't have it right now, Brooks, but I'd love to know the historical Patrick Mahomes one score game totals. Because I doubt they're much different. He wins these games. Peyton Manning wins those games. Tom Brady wins those I'm games. I'm just saying 7-0. and oh. Sure. Yeah, you, maybe you lose the ball. One. The ball bounces the wrong way in three of those games. You're 11-5. You're, you're yeah, yeah, which is very different. All right. Uh, they had the worst red zone defense in football last year. Number six. Do you think they get when, when the other team gets into the the red zone, the defense is like, bah. Don't matter. Yeah, like Mahomes, Mahomes will take care of this. Let's. Pack it in. We didn't hold him. <laughs> let, let him in. Go. Oh, I'm tired. 77% of the time, their opponents scored a touchdown in that situation. And they got to the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, points per game last year. Obviously, the offense is incredible. Sixth in points per game. First in total yards. First in passing yards. 23rd in rushing attempts. I mean, everybody wanted 
uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire to come in and take over and give you the Kareem Hunt rookie season. Didn't happen at all. Um, he did have. He didn't give you the Kareem Hunt season. No. Well, and look, they didn't lean on him. I think that's there's two parts of it, right? Part of it is, could you get that elite season? But part of it is, are they going to let him be part of the identity as the offense in Kansas City? And the answer was no. I think that's why people were more disappointed is because there wasn't a game where you go, I mean, in that rookie year for Kareem Hunt, it was like, oh, that's a Kareem Hunt game. Yeah, There was fair. never a Clyde game. It's always a Mahomes game in Kansas City. So that's not to say anything about Clyde's potential, but we haven't seen him take yeah. over yet. Uh, Clyde, or, uh, Kareem's rookie year, I mean, you have uh, one – like six or seven games where he had 20-plus attempts. I'm, I'm going to look it up. Did, did Clyde ever have 20-plus attempts? He had, yeah. oh, so he had 25 carries. He had 20 or more carries three times, including week one. Week one, okay, week one definitely compounded into our feelings about Clyde because it was first round, first round running back for the highest scoring offense in the league. This is incredible. Andy Reid, running backs, uh, more often than not, give you incredible fantasy football seasons. And then week one, 25 carries for 138 yards and a touchdown. I know he had the multiple uh, getting stuffed on the goal line thing that people started to debate about. But you go from that into not getting 20-plus carries a game, I, I think that that also factored in. Because before he, before he got hurt – he was a top 12 running back. Well, there, 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 something interesting to think about with this offense and with Clyde specifically is that unlike, you know, the, the run heavy teams like Tennessee, you can absolutely not include your running game and dominate an NFL game. Sure. So you don't have to feature it. You don't have to focus on it. You don't have to resort to it at any point in time. If Patrick Mahomes wants the ball in his hands, that can happen. You can lose. You can have a game like that, like you're saying, where where he's got a handful of carries and they use somebody else, and you know you're you're going to have what they added Jarek McKinnon, they still have Daryl Williams, they lost Damian Williams. That's the other side of the coin with the upside of Clyde. He's a multi-dimensional player. He can catch the football. Even last year, he was one of only 14 running backs with 235 opportunities in yeah. that quote unquote bad rookie year. So there is upside there. He's just not wasn't the focal point last year and won't be this year. Yeah, he's not going to be the focal point, but I do believe that he is one of the best values right now because he's being drafted at what I believe his floor is. You know, he's right right now the the lowest I could see him finishing a full season or, you know, 15 or 16 games uh, would basically be like running back 16 and that's where he's being drafted, but his upside is absolutely top 5 in this offense. So you talk about possible my guys. This is someone where when I have been in the 3rd round and Clyde falls there. I, I just I really have a hard time not taking him. Even if I've already gone running back, running back, um, or it allows you to take Kelsey. Clyde Edwards Alaire to me, he's he's a massive value because of the disappointment of last year. And he was a rookie. Like we can't forget that. You know, pass protection and and uh, all those things that we bring up with other players. He's only going to be more involved this year. Uh, I I don't think he's going to be less involved. So I'm I'm a, he's my favorite um, kind of value running back right now. He scored. He was uh, the rushing touchdowns also really hurt him. You had four four, four total on the season. Uh, so you have you know he, he was averaging a touchdown every forty five attempts, and meanwhile you guys you have guys like Melvin Gordon twenty a touchdown every twenty four attempts. Jonathan Taylor, every 21 attempts. Kenyon Drake, who kept felt like he kept getting stuffed over and over, every 24 rushing attempts. You have some positive touchdown regression coming for Clyde edwards alaire even if he is not hitting Kareem Hunt levels of 25 attempts per game. I agree. I think there's a chance for that to happen. I mean, it's a team much like with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay a few years ago where they're very comfortable just throwing the football inside the five. I mean, throwing it to Travis Kelsey – uh, shovel passing it to Travis Kelsey yeah, or Tyree that, Kill. That that freaking tap pass and yeah. shovel passes. So they do they do creative things inside the red zone. They don't just hand the ball off. But um, I mean, it's a, it's a difference between him and like David Montgomery, right? Where Montgomery could be the focal point of the entire Bear offense. He probably will be. 
that probably will be their offense. So do you want David Montgomery? In, it, they're both third-round guys, so if you're like in the middle of the third, you're choosing which one you want. Would you go Clyde or David Montgomery? Right now, I, I have them uh, two spots apart. I have David Montgomery higher. Okay. So, um, but, but there's tons of upside for Clyde. Obviously, you love being attached to that offense. They have rebuilt their offensive line. Like yes. a full – like they watched the film – then they threw up into a, <laughs> what the Super Bowl. They threw up into a bucket, and then they redid their offensive line. They brought in the big trade for Orlando Brown. Uh, Joe Thune's there at guard. Full remake. I mean, that could mean good things, but it it is a transition. They've got Tardif coming back from uh, the COVID IR. Uh, I think they're only returning one starter, which you know continuity is important for offensive line, but the actual players matter right. too. And, th and this is an upgraded offensive line, which was their clear hole. Uh, last year where are you drafting Patrick Mahomes that's the question because we all think he's great he's the number one or number two fantasy option this year at quarterback I'm comfortable he's one of the he's probably the only quarterback I can say this about but because of the historical success I am comfortable in the third round taking Patrick Mahomes if you want to do it I'm not going to beat you up over it I mean he's He's been a quarterback one in 75 percent of all of his starts he is, and I've had him on teams Ooh. And it's great because you know nine times out of ten you're beating your opponent at that position. And with him not being the fir you know third round, I could live with it. It's really tough for me because while you can easily argue that the value is there for someone as uh, s such a known commodity as Patrick Mahomes, I have Kyler ahead of him. And Kyler's going in the fifth. So I can't imagine taking Mahomes where he is. This year, it, it's, it seems to me I'm, I'm going to be almost exclusively – late round draft pick because if Kyler goes up anymore then I'm just gonna wait to the wait till the late rounds yeah there's no way I'm gonna get Mahomes unfortunately uh I do want to talk about the wide receivers because I think that there's a false narrative that is out there for the Kansas City Chiefs which is basically like this is the year for McCole Hardman or Demarcus Robinson because to step it just up. makes sense but the, the dude throws 5,000 yards and 40 plus touchdowns how is no one else catching the ball well, that's what's so great. I think that's the narrative I think is wrong because – It is. I'm, I'm agreeing with yeah, you, but I'm, mean, I'm giving you the voice of public opinion without Jason's stupid voice. Yeah, it's not – But my <laughs> <that> voice. <laughs> They're not replacing much. That's my point. That Sammy Watkins was 30, 37 catches last year, right? Uh, 400 yards. So out of that large pie, he really wasn't much of anything. So, like, they don't need – to prioritize McCole Hardman or DeMar Demarcus Robinson. They can use both in the same type of um, system that they had last year, and you could still be sad you drafted either. Yeah, I mean, in best ball, I get it, because you're going to have a couple big games that will be auto-put in your lineup. And also because, really, I, th I think McCole Hardman, Demarcus Robinson, this is a situation of injury. Like, Kelsey and Tyreek Hill have been healthy the vast majority of games with Patrick Mahomes, and... If one of them were to miss time, then someone has to step up. Maybe that is just Clyde and it's not these guys. But that's why I would, you know, in a best ball league, I would look at one of those guys, but not in redraft or, or keeper leagues. Um, okay. Mike, do you have any thoughts on the wide receiver core? I mean, no, this team runs. It's Mahomes. It's Kelsey. It's Tyreek Hill. And then it's. And then and Clyde. And then me. Clyde. Yeah. And uh, then you're moving forward. They start against Cleveland, Baltimore, and then the Chargers. So that'll be an interesting start to yeah, the season. Yeah, but it's also Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City. Yeah, it City, doesn't matter. So yeah, I do not care. matchups aren't going to matter. Yeah, and also, since we haven't really touched on Kelsey and Tyreek Hill much, draft them in the first round. End, yeah. end of conversation. Yep. Uh, before we get to the Raiders. The Raiders. Uh, look, we want to thank Brooke Lennon. It is oh, I thought it was Brooks. It is summer. <laughs> uh, does Brooks own Brooklyn? I'm, I'm not sure. sure. I'm Maybe sure. he'll make an offer soon. But look, it's hot outside. Sunny days and unfortunately hot nights where for me, I need cool sheets. And I don't just mean like, oh, look how you rad those hot. sheets are. I mean like I need cold <laughs> sheets. <laughs> those are radical Comfortable, sheets. Comfortable, <laughs> awesome sheets. And Brooklyn, and, uh, I have Brooklyn and sheets on my bed right now. They are magically comfortable i mean this is real luxury type of material that is not 
super expensive. That's the whole point of Brooklinen. They work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without those luxury level markups. They're so confident in their core products, which include towels, robes, comfy loungewear, sheets. Uh, you know, they're so confident. They have a 365 day warranty. Uh, and the fans are confident, too. Five-star reviews, over 75,000 and counting. So give yourself the comfort refresh you deserve and get it for less at Brooklinen. Go to brooklinen.com. Use promo code FANTASY for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Enter promo code FANTASY for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. brooklinen.com, promo code FANTASY. We'd like to thank Headspace for sponsoring today's show. Uh, you Maybe you've tried meditation. Maybe to you meditation is a scary type of a, a dirty word, and you don't even want to think about it. Well, I'm telling you, you should really give it a chance. It helps the mental health. It, is, it should be part of your self-care plan this year, and Headspace makes it easy. It's your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations and an easy-to-use app. They have meditations that start at just one minute. They have a set of walking meditations. They are they're, they're finding you in your busiest of schedules where and when you need to, to have that moment to yourself to help reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, increase your overall sense of well-being. I have a Headspace account. When I'm getting a little, I, I, the anxiety is bubbling up. I can feel it. I got to take care of it. I need a moment for myself. I just jump on my Headspace account and I get that breath and it really does help. They're backed by 25 published studies on the benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews, over 60 million downloads. You deserve to feel happier and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash footballers. That's headspace.com slash footballers. You're going to get a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Headspace.com slash footballers. All right, it's time for the Raiders. Yeah. Eight and eight last year. It's about how I feel about the Raiders. Uh, they started six and three. They had a week five win at Kansas City. Five and four in one score games. Uh, they hit the over. Ooh. On their totals, 13 of 16 games. It was number oh. one in the NFL. Because everybody went into the game going, ah, oh, the Raiders. <laughs> and then all of a sudden. Oh, sudden, Derek Carr, you cutie patootie. And then Derek Carr and Nelson Aguilar went nuts. They were 10th in points per game. This was a good offense. They were 11th in rushing attempts, 14th in rushing yards. That's Sixth crazy. in rushing touchdowns, 7th in passing touchdowns. That is a top 10 offense in almost every major offensive category. Does it feel that way, Jason? No, <laughs> no way. Not even close. If you remember last year, they were the wackiest, wildest team where every time you expected something, they did the opposite. When they beat the Kansas City Chiefs, it was like unbelievable. They scored. They put up a 40-burger on the Chiefs. It was great. And then a couple weeks later against Atlanta, they scored six points in a loss. It was like you just couldn't peg them. And now this offseason, they've been wild and wacky, just trading away their offensive line, bringing in Kenyon Drake, doing all these moves that just look to us dumb outsiders look stupid. Um, I'm curious, Andy. What was I've waited the whole show to find out. What was the Vegas win total? I would put them at like seven and a half. Seven. Oh, yeah. Ooh, That's right. Generous. In fact, it was seven Vegas and a half generous. at the beginning of the offseason, and now it's seven. Um, here's the spoiler alert. It's the lowest in the division. It's good division. It is. Ooh. But that's a – I mean, is they it, finished second last year. The defense is rough. I was going to say, are they still – so is, bad. Are they still trying to factor in uh, the possibility of Aaron Rodgers? To, to the Broncos. I don't no, I don't think so. Because I think we agree that Denver has the bones of a good team. They do. And so if Teddy Bridgewater can help be just an, a little bit better than Drew Locke, then maybe they have a shot. And we'll talk about them shortly, but with with the Raiders, you're right. The defense was awful. 50% of their opponents drives ended in a score. So half the time their opponents had the ball, they ended up scoring, they had to score a lot like the you know, those points per game totals and those numbers can be a little, little bit deceptive when you're playing comeback football all the time. Jason alluded to it. They 
signed Kenyon Drake and John Brown this offseason. They let go of Nelson Aguilar, who is their leading receiver. And, you know, Derek Carr is still there. Send in the car. Send in the car. Career highs in passing yards, yards per completion, and quarterback rating last year. Weird team. I think a general, like, fantasy dislike distorts what they've been able to have success with. Maybe just thinking that Derek Carr is not a franchise quarterback. A lot of people don't believe he is. But this was a pretty good year for them on the offensive side of the football. So, you know, Derek Carr is not a big talking point for fantasy. No. Nobody's out there. Um, you know, he, we don't even bring him up as a streamer very much. Right now he's the quarterback 28. So basically everybody's getting drafted with higher upside in people's minds compared to Derek Carr. Well, one of the things that is so great about Darren Waller and one of the it is the same problem with their car. There's not a lot of weapons here, or at least not a lot of trustworthy target hogs. We hope that Henry Ruggs can take that step forward. Um, maybe John Brown will be able to stay healthy or uh, Brian Edwards. Remember him, but the yeah. hype train last year, like maybe one of these guys will do something, but for the most part, you look at this wide receiver core and you say, this is among the worst in the league. They, they are, they don't have a lot there, which is great for Darren Waller. He's the number one target, but that's the problem with Derek Carr. Like, I can't get mad at Derek Carr because is it his fault? You know what I mean? Like, that, that we're not excited about him for fantasy. When he had Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper, he was good. Well, and, and he was good on paper last year, but what you're saying brings up the truth, which is if you don't have wide receivers that could take – that are probable to take the next step or established – you don't have a ceiling, right? Like last year with Nelson Aguilar, who is now gone, 46% of the targets went to the wide receivers. That was the lowest in the NFL. Now that guy's gone, and Hunter Renfro and Henry Ruggs and to be named later are going to be their top options. Maybe it's John Brown, but this is not – I don't think people see the ceiling there. And I think they see John Gruden and they say, you, he went out and got Kenyon Drake. Josh Jacobs already had a ton of carries. He wants the identity to be the running game. Yeah, I mean, clearly. That's the problem, or a problem with the Raiders is John Gruden. Tremendous in the booth, Monday Night Football. I loved having John Gruden up there. On the sideline, I, I, don't, I do not trust what this man is, is up to here. I mean, Derek Carr, steady. I will, I will say that. You know, you, the majority of his career, he's thrown for right at 4,000 yards. Anybody? Then he's given you uh, usually low twenties in passing touchdowns. He had, you know, he we got the twenty seven mark last year. But again, you just things went crazy. You saw Kirk Cousins with well, I think like thirty five touchdowns. It, it was wild last year. So I I don't trust the the coaching staff to put these players in the position that we need them to be in for fantasy football. The wheels could also fall off here. Like if it, it's a very tough division, they have the lowest Vegas win total. And the Derek Carr screams, like there's he's zero cap next year. So yeah, and, and the so offensive if, line is trash. Yeah, if they don't like, like it, they might move on. They they have really dis they've done a great job disassembling their offensive line, um, which I don't know why they chose to do that, but they did, um, and <clears throat> that's going to hurt Derek Carr a lot. the The question to me is Henry Ruggs, can he will he step forward because he's a screaming value late in drafts. Um, sure. He, he costs you nothing. You could drop him if he doesn't hit. If he does take that step forward um, into an elite, the, the, the option for a lot of targets, if he had 130 targets this year, you could see a path for that because he's competing with John Brown. He just has to go. I mean, it has to be a huge step up. Like, yes, I like the can he question more than the will he. It's much easier to ask answer the can he question. But 43 targets last year to what you're talking about is um, it's going to be rugs, but it's also going to be a, a Gruden decision and a car decision to get him the ball that much. Yeah, it's improbable. And, and John Brown's probably going to be the one that actually earns the trust of Derek Carr well, he's, in practice. He's the best wide receiver on the team now. Yes, he is. And Nelson Aguilar was last year, right. which is shocking. Are you guys familiar with isgrudengoneyet.com? No, no, no. It's just a, a clock that that shows you how much money he's actually owed. Oh, I have seen that before. It, it's a it's a very funny counter, but it 
just to highlight the deal that they gave him. He still has six years remaining and is still owed nearly $65 million. Wow, that is a fun so, website. So if the wheels fall off this year for the Raiders. They won't fall off. They for don't Gruden. fall off for no. John Gruden. What was the Raiders? Because he's on a hoverboard. Um, what was their record l the season before? Okay, uh, so they were seven and nine. So they went from seven and nine to eight and eight. Okay, okay. Which, that's just middle of the road, which is exactly what Derek Carr has been for fantasy. Somewhere yep. outside, somewhere twelve to sixteen. Like you probably can stream him in oh, a, yeah, a, a right certain matchup. matchup. Let's talk about the the big question mark that people have: the backfield. They brought in Kenyon Drake, a lot of hoopla. Josh Jacobs' ADP has plummeted compared to last year. He's the RB20 off the board behind Montgomery. Uh, Kenyon Ooh. Drake has arrived. That's a great question for you, Andy. David well, I, Montgomery or, or Josh Jacobs? I'll take David Montgomery. Okay. Yeah, because a sustained elite play at the end of last year combined with the fact that he's – he doesn't have the Kenyon Drake problem, if you want to call it that. I'm not that worried about workload for Josh Jacobs. You saw the stat, 46% of total receptions to wide receivers, and then they added nobody of real relevance. Like, they're going to get the ball to Kenyon Drake in the passing game. He's four full years older than Josh Jacobs. Um, I think they can both work in this offense. Yeah, the big question going into last year was the passing work for Josh Jacobs. It did tick up. From 20 to 33 receptions, but that's still just not enough to be relevant in that game. And then you go, you project it forward and you say, it looks like Kenyon Drake yeah. is being brought in to be more of the receiving back. And they have always brought in a receiving back, much to our chagrin, whether it's Jalen Rashard, uh, whether Devontae it was Booker. Uh, DeAndre Washington. Um, so that's Kenyon Drake right now. And so I think Josh Jacobs is fine. The Kenyon Drake news has overblown his demise i don't think the rb eight's demise has much value the, the yes the the target that ship i think that's probably sailed for the career but it it's at least gone for one more year and he's very game dependent in raider wins he averaged 93 rushing yards and over 20 fantasy points a game and losses just over 51 rushing yards per game and under 10 Fantasy Ooh, points. Per I see game. more losses than wins so, this year. This Josh Jacobs is, yeah, it, fine. It, and the RB twenty. I think that that's an okay place to draft. I'm not going to try to talk people into Josh Jacobs. Like I don't people. Josh Jacobs last year. If you soured on him, if you drafted him because you thought you could get top five and you got RB eight and you got the inconsistency and you were disappointed, just pass on him. That's fine. I I still think he's too low. And, uh, but you don't have to take him. The hard part is for when you're talking about the consistency of he was, he was either great for your team or he full on submarined your week RB 43 against Tampa in week seven RB 50 against the Atlanta Falcons in week 12. I mean, he's still one of the more consistent running backs. If you look, he's a B he's 62% of the time usable and he got hurt, right? He missed a game hurt. Um, and that what so, whatever. I don't have to talk you into yeah, no, no. it. I don't want to go down with another Josh Jacobs ship. You know, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to raise your boat, my man. Of saying like RB twenty, that's fine because you're not drafting him like you did last year. Where is he you, good? You need him to carry. Is, is he good? Is he yes. A good, yes. Is he yes. a good player? That, yes. Thank you for asking that question because we need to say that he is yes a very good running back. What about Darren Waller? Oh. <laughs> He's Whee! great. Darren Waller is fun. Remember last year when we thought that these draft picks and Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards was going to yep. mean something? Maybe Derek Carr just doesn't really want to throw to those players. Maybe Darren Waller is just that much better than everybody. It, I would say this. If I was a quarterback behind that offensive line and I could throw it to Darren Waller, right. I yes. would throw it to him almost every day. Look how big he is. I'm going to throw it to that guy. Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Miami, at Los Angeles to start the year. Not the best. So, ew. where are you drafting uh, the Walrus? I am his his third round ADP is perfectly fine to me. Wall, Waller or Kittle for you? Waller. 
I feel <laughs> more secure in the, in the Waller having a the Waller the Waller. <laughs> I am, I'm more confident in him maintaining his incredible target share. Which in Darren Waller is not Travis Kelsey. He Darren Waller was you know down the stretch a league winning type of player when he was you know, the tight end one in three of six games if you include week 17 he finished just absolutely on fire but he does have games where he doesn't show up all right the chargers were seven and nine last year won the last four games of the season couldn't keep their coach's job they bring in brandon steely their new head coach joe lombardi taking over at offensive coordinator that's a question mark for this yes, team it is. hunter henry no longer with the squad brought in jared cook but a, a great finish to the year. I mean, seven and nine after the way they started. Vegas has them with nine wins. I mean, Justin Herbert hype is real. Also, great wide receivers, great weapons in the backfield with Austin Eckler. Uh, what is your overarching opinion of this team? I mean, is that is that win total surprising to you? That win total is not surprising to me. I think this is uh, you know the Cinderella Super Bowl contending pick. Whoa. Like when I. When I look at this roster, I see a very, very... You just very, said Super Bowl. Yes, I see a very, very good team. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about this a lot in the offseason. We talked about it a lot last year while we were going through it. Um, but this projected to be a really good defense, and then they lost all their really good defensive players, and then it was a very bad defense. Um, assuming that they don't, you know, 49ers this thing and just everyone collapse into injuries, I, I think the Chargers' defense is going to be great. Um, and... Justin Herbert said, you know, I can do this. They yep. they brought in uh, you know, a head coach that is a defensive minded guy. So I I think just as the not for fantasy necessarily, but as an NFL team, they project to me to be very good. I went if I had to take an over under on the 9, I think I would go over even in a tough Ooh. division. I'm not as bullish. Justin Herbert last year was incredible. Quarterback 6 right now in drafts. Six round pick. That's a little too rich for me. Seems too rich for me too. Like, is this, you know, you said for the NFL purposes and their defense that you like their team, but is Justin Herbert going to take a step back? He could easily take a step back for fantasy. Um, if you look at how he started his career running the ball through the first several weeks, um, and then he kind of got away from that, which was good for NFL and bad for fantasy. Um, now, he was great. You know, the shoe didn't drop for a long time uh, with <laughs> Justin Herbert last year, <laughs> and he's he's very good. But I, I I do think that it's easy for him to take a, a backward step here without having to always score. You know, I'm looking through their game logs, and they lost. They gave up uh, 28 points, 27, 45, uh, 29, 31, 31, 29. Like, they're – they have to score more than 30 if they're going to win every single week last year. And so he's out there slinging the rock. Um, and I, I think they're going to be able to run the ball a little bit more this year. So but the offensive line is so much like this is this is easily in the NFL, the biggest, most improved offensive line. The OK, then let's move the conversation to awesome Eckler. How confident are you? in Austin Eckler currently being drafted at the beginning of the second round as the RB10 are you going in on that yeah I'm I'm in on Austin Eckler I think that he we know he gets the the ball passed to him we A know lot. we know the offensive line is great we know he's been good in fantasy and we know he has very very little competition for the backfield and and they he's not going to be a 300 carry guy he's not built for that but he is the guy I mean Joshua Kelly uh, and Justin Jackson, they're they're not right. They're not impeding. Justin Jackson might not even make the team. Right, they're not impeding. Joshua Kelly, you mean? No, I'm in Justin Jackson. Sure, what? Either one. There's talk about Justin Jackson getting cut. I thought I was right. It was Joshua Kelly. They, you, we might have both. They're all, they're read, all getting, why not both? Read, <laughs> we might have read two articles, and they're like, no, thank you. But yeah, I mean, uh, so I I don't see how I don't see a path for Austin Eckler to have a bad season. I, I you know outside of any everybody's path of injury. Um, even if he doesn't score a lot of touchdowns, which he has not really been a touchdown machine, he's going to be fine. He catches the ball enough. I think he could have an elite year. I, I really do. Um, okay, so let, let's put Eckler to the test a little bit because at the beginning of the second, you might be looking at a wide receiver 
uh, I guess hypothetically, Jason, you have start you on this show. We kind of like Zeke more than consensus, mm -hmm. but you're able to get him at the end of the first round. You start Zeke. Now you're coming back around, and you have your choice. Adams is there. Hopkins is there. Diggs is there. Are you starting RB RB? Are you going? Zeke and then one of the elite three. No, I I personally would go Austin Eckler. Okay. Uh, right now he's my running back nine, and I I think that the those middle rounds, those three, four, five, the wide receivers there are just so much better by comparison to the gap of the running backs that are there versus the first rounds. All right, wide receiver core, Keenan Allen. You know he's elite. You know he's yeah. great. He is going in the third round right now. Um. No real doubts about Keenan Allen. Fifth most receptions last year, fifth highest target share. Why not throw to Keenan Allen? You know, that's kind of the way it works. If he's healthy, quarterbacks are going to throw him the ball because he's an elite route runner. Always open. With sure hands. But Mike Williams, do you believe in the sleeper potential that I brought up a few shows ago? Could Mike Williams take a step forward this year to be more consistent? Oh, yeah, he could. I mean, we're talking about the, the opportunity for Henry oh, yeah. Ruggs or the opportunity for <laughs> Mike Williams. At least we've seen Mike Williams do it on the NFL field already. Um, he's got a better quarterback, and he is completely free in drafts. So he's one of my favorite last-round picks this season. Uh, you've brought him up as a sleeper, Andy, and I and I, I love that take. The Broncos, are, they're five and, they were 5-11 and 11 last oh, year. Oh, come on, Jared Cook. And Jared, the people want us to talk about Jared Cook. Oh, Jared Cook? Oh, okay. All right. Jared Cook. It's simple. If he is not D-U-N, if he's not toast, if he's not old busted, he's coming into a team where you've got a good quarterback. He's a great end zone target. Uh, he's replacing Hunter Henry. The opportunity is there for him to be a value as one of those last tight ends off the board or... He's 34. He's just gone. He, he, or he's got nothing he's left He's 34, and according to last year. Yeah, this is pro, funny. Pro football focus, he graded out uh, as the worst pass blocking tight end ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, what time frame, Mike? Oh, of, uh, of all time. Okay. All the times that they've ever looked at anything. <laughs> Never seen it work. That, well, hey, that's good news for fantasy. That, it honestly, it reminds me, like, Jared Cook could be. Jimmy Graham. Yeah, just uh, yeah, yeah, okay. go That's, out there yeah. once He'll you're catch some in the 20 yeah. and catch seven, eight touchdowns and then go take a seat. Can we talk about the Broncos now? Yes, All we right. can. All right. You you could have been right, Mike. I mean, they're at eight and a half wins right now in Vegas. They were seven and a half early in the offseason. That could be a hedge against the potential of Rodgers arriving, right? You know, you got to move that line up a little bit. Uh, but that is becoming more unlikely by the day. Teddy Bridgewater... Drew Locke competing at the quarterback position. <laughs> okay, let's say it's not Rodgers because I have a hunch that if they trade for Aaron Rodgers, He'll he, start. he would start for yeah, this team. Probably, yeah. Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, you're placing your bets on this. This is – I wanted to call it a heavyweight fight, but this is like – Nope. This is like a YouTuber fight. <laughs> this, this, is, this is two D-level YouTubers <laughs> fighting it out to be a starting quarterback. Look, I'm a much bigger – fan of the Teddy Bridgewater than I am the Drew Locke. So right. uh, I, I think Bridgewater will start more games than Drew Locke. I think they might both see the field. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say uh, as of right now, I think Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> starts the whole season. Um, the organization probably wants Drew Locke to be the guy. Uh, they want their pick to have I worked know, out. They, didn't they trade for Teddy Bridgewater? Y yes, but they, they, they want him to get that opportunity. They want him to level up. <laughs> they want level him to up. win. They want him to win the job, but I don't think he will. I don't think he can. There's a lot, a long way to go up from 30th in total number of first downs, 31st in completion percentage. Um, this offense was 28th in points per game. This was a failed offense last year, a failing offense last year. So they needed to make big changes. They went out. They drafted Javante Williams in the second round. They oh, signed yeah. Teddy Bridgewater. And... They're hoping that that mixed with a defense that can improve because it wasn't that great last year, but that's what Vic Fangio is known for, that you'll see some strides made and that they'll be able to gut out some wins. I mean, they've, they've had seasons like that before in Denver where Bridgewater doesn't turn it over. Maybe that's the plan. 
Keep them in games. Run the rock. I mean, I was on a show today, and they brought up bus, and, you know, we have it in the UBK. Melvin Gordon's on that list. I mean, yeah. because you don't know, like, the act – He's the jug of milk that doesn't look quite right in right. the fridge, but you haven't got the glance at the expiration date yet. Like you're maybe you're saying, I mean, it could be week two, it could be week four, it could be week one. You take a whiff of that in the train in training camp, and then you get a whiff of. Oh, I've already smelled Javante Williams. I've, I've already smelled it, and I've smelled Javante Williams. He smells delightful. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, he's his musk is Popery has is, arrived in the backfield. It's fantastic. Yeah, I, I don't think Melvin Gordon was, you know, taught about Cologne and Devontae's <laughs> just really been not too much so. No, no, no very not, classy. It just smells he, right. You know, he's going for the the higher end Cologne and it's, just this, put, this little is spritz. Guys, not Axe you body bringing spray. Me, uh, you're bringing back a story from my childhood. Oh, oh do no. share one of the most embarrassing <laughs> stories. <laughs> yes, and we got to hear it story now. Story time. The, you know, when you're just getting to that seventh eighth grade and the yep the kids someone brought someone got you some jacar oh i had some cologne some brute. <laughs> oh man you know you had that green bottle of brute. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and you know how the kids they started to throw the like grown not grown up the the big kid parties right yep where boys and girls are invited yeah uh -huh. and they're gonna do dancing and guys i was so nervous i got myself decked out looking nice right probably had some gel in my hair oh yeah. I was covered in in cologne. <laughs> I mean, I smell. You could smell me from. And the worst part was, I walked all the way to this girl's house that was having the party. Knock on the door. The party's the next week. Oh no! Oh man! No! I'm all oh, decked out for the party. What I'm, a loser! I'm smelling like cologne. How old were you? A seventh grade or something like that. Oh man! A week early. Did you? Go a week early, Ooh. baby. Did you go back? That's the great question. <laughs> Well, I went back home right then, oh, yeah, very course. sadly. And then, yes, I did go to the party. All right, less cologne or just the same? I probably doubled it. I mean, uh, I probably needed, felt like I needed wait, to so cover. You, but you weren't super suave. I mean, like, well, since I'm here, I just said, "Hey, I'm gonna <laughs> what wait." What are you doing right now? I'm gonna wait. <laughs> um, so Anyways. All, all all cologne and and stink uh, <laughs> jokes aside, I know that Cecil Lammy, he's uh, he's, he's on Twitter in there. And, and he's tied into the Broncos. He has basically said, he, he commented on one of my posts, um, that Javante is a starter, that Melvin Gordon is a backup. Yeah, I'm in on Javante. And so that, that really changed my outlook because I trust, uh, you know, certain people are, pl are plugged into certain teams. He is plugged into the Broncos, and that's his viewpoint right now. Now, that's subject to change. It could be a, a complete timeshare. It could be whatever. But when he called Melvin Gordon the back up to me, I was like, <laughs> okay, I need, to, I need to maybe take a look at uh, – I and, got these guys statted out. And, and you can't really pay attention to his ADP right now because no. Javante Williams will not go. Like the drumbeat is either no, going to you gross. should be drafting him. If you're doing best ball, you yes. should be drafting Javante Williams where he is, his ADP yeah. is. Yes, and he is rising. He is definitely rising. Led the NCAA in broken tackles, 19 touchdowns last year. He is very good. This, this isn't a player who he's – if he gets his opportunity, you're like, oh, okay, there's going to be some volume there. I'll get some fantasy points. No, Javante Williams is a three-down running back on a team that saw Melvin Gordon, who – Melvin Gordon was okay, but running back 13 last year. You put you, – you take those opportunities for Melvin last year, give them to a fresh, uh, a fresh player who has, still has his legs with him. It is, an, is a great player on top of that. I am. That's why I want Teddy. I want Teddy back there. He made Mike. He, he gave Mike Davis a shot. This right. team is a scientific project about quarterbacks because they are as deep at almost <laughs> every it. position possible, both sides of the ball. This is a well constructed NFL roster, but no quarterback. And, and they so they bet against quarterback when they did not select Justin Fields and, in the draft. And so you got we're we're going to find out. Now real quick clarity on on the Cecil Lamy comments cuz I don't want these taken out of context. He was talking about James Conner and Melvin Gordon. He said both Gordon and Conner are reserve running backs. Um and and then uh he did say that Gordon seems leaner, upper body improved, still dangerous in space. The team wants Williams to be the guy. So, there you go. We'll see when the milk expires. Yep. The qu where will Javante end up in ADP? I at this point I don't know, but if somehow he only makes it to the fourth, he is. Almost, oh my gosh, he's basically going where Gordon is, and he will go ahead of Gordon. Yeah, yeah, by a lot. If if 
the drum beat continues. Yep. And then Melvin Gordon will go out there and like lead the team for four weeks. Mm. No. It no. happens, man. It happens a lot. But we'll see. I mean, it takes time. I mean, rookie running backs, it can take some time. We'll see what happens. He was – and just another final uh, to tie the bow on this. He was a second-round pick. They traded up to get him. Uh, are you talking about – Javante. Oh, I thought you were talking about Daryl Henderson. No. No. <laughs> third round. Henderson <laughs> I know, was the third round I know. Pick. But I do remember the arguments in the same vein, and it can take time. Um, I'm rooting for him. I hope we I hope we get clarity. For fantasy players, it would be nice to have another running back you can count on as opposed to a murky situation. Per fro, uh, football focus, per, per, per? pro football there we go. focus, 63% of the wide receiver targets were catchable last year. <laughs> That's what Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton and they Tim want, Patrick. They think this guy's going to level up? <laughs> Denver, well, get it together. I would say it's a lock that he doesn't level oh, up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Too irresponsible. So, uh, assuming that Teddy Bridgewater is the quarterback, these wide receivers, I think, have a path towards having a decent season. You had multiple thousand-yard seasons uh, for the Panthers with Teddy yep. Bridgewater, and I think that that's more of a offensive uh, schemed system versus uh, these Denver Broncos. But I'm a fan of Cortland Sutton right now. You can get him falling into the seventh round pretty commonly. And as a seventh-round pick to get a guy who really broke out two years ago was – uh, you know, an elite option in drafts last year, but then got injured and is back and is the leader of the team. I like Sutton, but um, it could be Judy. Who who are you guys putting your money on? I just think this team's identity is going to be, like if all things go according to plan, if they have a, a better defense than what, like Carolina offered Teddy Bridgewater, if they have a better running back than Carolina, you know, they lost Christian McCaffrey. That I'm just worried about the how many options there will be and, and how big that pie will be. You talk about Sutton. Had a successful year two years ago. Finished 19th at the position. Judy's a weapon. Patrick's good. Fant is a weapon in the offense. I am just, I'm actually worried about the pie and the player in Teddy Bridgewater not being big enough to give you uh, an elite year. I will agree that Sutton is a value. I mean, you draft him at wide receiver 30, you get the wide receiver 20, you're happy. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if, if he can go much higher than that. That's my only opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the chance on Cortland Sutton. Over uh, and I would take him over Jerry Judy. The again the red flag you need to remember of that breakout year where you had a very consistent Cortland Sutton. You could he became a plug and play guy. Weeks fourteen through seventeen, wide receiver fifty six, forty one, fifty one, forty five, and that's when it was Drew Lock time for the Denver Broncos. It's scary, yeah. And then Judy, like Judy. Basically had the A.J. Green season last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. I mean, it, it was a combination of not great. He had a lot of drops, too. He had a lot. Yeah, okay. A.J. Green didn't have a lot of drops. Um, Judy did. Both of them had separation, measurable separation issues. Both of them had quarterbacks who couldn't throw the ball near them. Um, and Judy, like, disappointed, but also didn't get a fair shot. And I think that he's a great player. Um, but I will agree with Jason and what he's been saying over the last – few weeks which is that Sutton is the better value and the better bet um and you know more established just needs to come back from this injury which was early last year and um hopefully everything we see in training camp is solid now can you guys tell me that Noah Fant will be better and and because obviously he's he was drafted to be great uh, <laughs> of course he was he is an extreme athlete and then last year he was super hurt remember his ankle was uh, a problem for the majority of the year, just always taped right. up, hobbled. Can you guys, because my dynasty team really, really needs Noah Fant to take that step forward. Is it possible? I think it's possible you get three solid weeks from Noah Fant <laughs> to start the year. <laughs> okay. Giants, Jacksonville, Jets. Oh, to start the year. And then just ship him out. Okay, baby. You got me excited. No, I mean, he's a talented player that, I again, I think it's going to be ping pong ball for all these guys. I don't think you're going to get enough passing volume to make you sit down and go, man, I can count on Noah Fant. I can count on Jerry Judy. I'm, that's my worry. Yeah, I don't. I don't see myself drafting Noah Fant in very many places. Of it, Judy's elite, Cortland Sutton is elite, and I, I know he was banged up last year, right, so that it's hard to weigh what he would have done if he were healthy. But get I mean, this Cortland team Sutton was man. Cortland Sutton was not on the team last year. He missed the whole year hurt. All and right, Noah he, Fant still didn't break out. Who wins the division? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I'm gonna go. Who, who's City second? Chiefs. Who's your second place team in this division? I've got the char the Chargers. Mike, uh, I think it's I think it's the Chargers. I will go with the Raiders. Ooh, oh, the oh, Raiders. Oh. I think the Raiders will will. Uh, I think it goes seven and nine. Then they got to eight and eight last year. I think it's nine and seven this year for the Raiders. Okay, Ooh. I think um, you could have a couple nine and seven teams in this. You division. could. Uh, what's the toughest player? Who is the toughest player to project in the entire division? Javante Williams to me right now. I, I, uh, I don't know where to, I don't know when to make the transition to right. the starter. I think Justin Herbert is tough for me. Uh, knowing whether it's going to continue. Obviously I, I like the kid, but tough division. Uh, I would say, I mean, yeah, I guess it's 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 ancillary, but Mike Williams of a guy who has had a thousand yard season, a guy who has had a double digit touchdown season, and has one of the up and coming quarterbacks in the league, and yet he's even with Herbert's success last year, that <clears throat> excuse me, that did not translate to Mike Williams' success. Sneakiest player. Well, Mike Williams is probably the stinkiest player, but okay, I'll, I'll go fine. Ruggs. Now, you did not say stinkiest because that's Melvin. <laughs> right. Uh, no, I'll go Henry Ruggs um, oh. as my sneakiest. And I would say John Brown. I was going to say John Brown, too. I'll take Brown so. over Ruggs. All right, quick reminder, if you are interested in improving your shot at having a great draft, check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. We just re released the Draft Analyzer, which is part of the UDK Plus, that will let you import your roster, get a grade, get some an action plan to improve the team, get grades at every position group and a lot of information, which will be very important coming uh, up in August. I know a lot of people out there are drafting a lot more than one team. And so this will give you a lay of the land, not just for you, but you can put it. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this is cheating, but you can put in your other teams in the league mm -hmm. and you can see how they stack up and maybe some of their weaknesses. And then you can use that and go and try to trade for their players. If you're in a dynasty league as well, Gives you a really nice age uh, breakdown breakdown per position. Yes. So, Brooks, you got anything else for me? I don't. Mm. Okay. Money? Always. No. Always. Uh, this is the part. I guess we didn't say anything at the top. I mean, this is Thursday, right? So what happened in the Suns game? We don't know we yet. We don't know. I mean, we won. Because we, people we know probably. What happened. Yeah, we lost. Now I'm trying to do the opposite of what we did last time. <laughs> It ended in a tie. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for today's show. Reminder, there's a Saturday, Saturday episode of the Fantasy Footballers coming up this week, so we're not done yet. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>